Nerd alert! Learning is important, right? Yes, exactly. What a bunch of nerds. Nerd alert! Right. Marketing Architects. Hello, and welcome to the Marketing Architects, a research-first podcast dedicated to answering your toughest marketing questions. I'm Elena Jasper. I run the marketing team here at Marketing Architects, and I'm joined by my co-host, Rob DeMars, the Chief Product Architect of Misfits and Machines. Hello! We're back with your weekly nerd alert. Every week, I'll take a deep dive into academic marketing research and translate its complex ideas into simple, understandable language for Rob and, of course, for all of you. Rob, are you ready to nerd out? Nerd is the word, Elena. Nerd Nerd. is the word. Nerd is the word. Let's get into it. As always, we'll link the research we cover in the episode notes. This week, I read, Influence of Dynamic Content on Visual Attention During Video Advertisements. By Brooke Woolley from Murdoch University, Stephen Bellman and Nicole Hartnett from the Ehrenberg Bass Institute, and Amy Rask and Dwayne Varan from Media Science. This study focuses on how dynamic content in video ads captures and holds our attention. And to be clear, dynamic content is advertising elements that are not static, but involve motion or change over time. Static content, on the other hand, includes things that stay fixed in size, position, and appearance throughout the ad. This study is really useful for anyone listening who invests in video creative. We all know how distracted we all are and how hard it is to get someone's attention, let alone with an ad that they might not want to see. I really love this study. It did kind of break my brain a little bit, so bear with me as we get through it. But before we dive in, Rob, you have a lot of experience with video creative and eye tracking. What elements of commercials have you found consistently capture attention? All right, I've got a a couple different answers for you here. First of all, I know we're talking about video, but the audio within the video is always a huge trigger. And I, it was funny, just the other day, I was talking about this cereal that I used to eat when I was in like third grade called Smurf Berry Crunch. All right, it was a cereal that was branded with the Smurfs. And all of a sudden I started singing Smurf Berry Crunch is fun to eat a Smurfy fruity breakfast treat. That's from like when I was in third grade, right? I'm 50 now and I still have that jingle in my head. So obviously audio will always play a a huge role. In addition to that, we've seen in eye tracking studies, there is an inherent need for people to look at faces. So faces in ads are always impactful at drawing the eye. It's something to do with babies. When we're first born, the first thing we see is our mother's face. And so we are hardwired to look at faces. Then lastly, just the use of emotion in any type of television commercial is powerful. I always like to talk about a speech I heard from Roy Williams, who's kind of known as the Wizard of Ads. He talks about surprising the broca right? And the broke is the region in your brain that's sort of seen as the gatekeeper for attention and comprehension and working memory. And that emotion is the trigger for breaking through the broca. And we've even used the term internally called the broca buster. Does it have a broca buster in it? Because that will truly make sure you're capturing attention. And any time that you can increase someone's adrenaline, when they're watching a piece of video, that it naturally causes it to be more memorable. Adrenaline is seen as the adhesive of memory. That's interesting. I think this study probably gets into more specific details of like visually what you can do. So maybe you'll find this interesting. I'm curious if you'll find that like this holds true for some of what you've seen work too. So let's talk about the study. These researchers, they wanted to test some traditional theories of what grabs your attention, like salience theory, which says size, color, and brightness naturally makes you pay attention. They wanted to see if that applies to video ads, but they also brought forward a new idea called dynamic attention theory. And that suggests that our attention is influenced by how things move and change in ads instead of this sort of older idea that just size, color, and brightness is what grabs us. And they used eye tracking technology and IBBS, which stands for intelligent bounding boxes to measure visual attention to AIOs, AKA areas of interest in video ads. And I wanted to break down a dynamic attention theory a little bit more. It has four dimensions. The first is imminence. So this is how close or far something is on the screen. And is it in like the center versus the edges? Motivational relevance, which is whether something is important for survival or a threat. So it's like food or danger. Task relevance, 
This is whether something is important for the viewer's current task and stability, whether something is stable, so it's always there in the shot, or it's fleeting, it's likely to disappear. So how about the findings? Well, no surprise, big, bright, and colorful objects do grab our attention and help make your ad more effective. But the researchers also found our attention is influenced by how we interact with our environment. So we're speaking of, Robbie, we're mentioning what we're wired to pay attention to, stuff like faces. We're also wired to pay attention to things that are moving, relevant to our tasks, and potentially fleeting. They tested this idea with an eye tracking study. They had viewers watch a series of unfamiliar video ads while tracking where and how long they looked at different parts of the screen. Static factors like size, color, and brightness did explain some of their attention, about 90% for what people fixated on and 57% for how long they looked. But here's where it gets interesting. The dynamic attention theory predicted that attention patterns, some attention patterns that salience theory didn't predict. For example, viewers paid less attention to things that were central, relevant, and stable, like a logo in the middle of the screen. That's so interesting, but our brains, they don't need to remember these stable elements because they're always there. Instead, viewers focus more on peripheral, fleeting, and less stable elements, so things that might disappear if they're not noticed right away. For example, having a product appear and move across the screen might be more effective than just showing it in a static, central position. So that means that dynamic elements, those that move or change, they're crucial for capturing attention in video ads. And there's way, way more detail in this study, so I encourage people to go read it if they're interested. But Rob, had you heard of that before? Have you experienced that? Does that match up? I haven't heard all those specific details, but one of the things I'd encourage anyone, if they're working in television and video, is to research the eye tracking studies that are now available online. I think people think of that or they hear that, especially as creatives. And they're like, well, that sounds really time consuming and expensive, but the technology has gotten so good. They use algorithms to replicate the eye tracking. So you can literally test your videos in real time in minutes for really little cost. And I always think of it as it's kind of like spell check for visuals. If you're watching a piece of video and your intention as a marketer is in this particular spot to be looking at the URL, but instead the eyeballs are looking at an orange that's on the kitchen table in the shot because of the co color contrast. Well, then maybe we should pick a different shot for this particular scene. So I, I really think it's incredibly practical and not as foo-foo scientific as it might come across just in the white papers. That this just, it's a really easy and meaningful addition, especially when you're trying to convince your clients of certain things as well. That it brings a level of objectivity when you're saying, we really think this layout works best for this end frame, but don't just take my word for it. Look at the eye tracking study that we did. That's really good advice. And I'd imagine when the study came out, eye tracking probably wasn't as widely available. So now instead of trying to remember like all of this, these different details about how exactly your ad needs to be, it's good to have a base, but you could do what Rob's suggesting, which is use some eye tracking technology. I know that we'll use that a lot, like you're saying, for picking certain shots, but even for things like a CTA or like things that are very easy to edit, it, it would not be hard to just put a frame into eye tracking and see are people going, are their eyes going where I want them to. I totally agree. And this is to all my art director friends out there. I don't mean to throw any shade here, but oftentimes we like to make some of those URLs and things almost invisible because we don't want it to mess up the beautiful footage. It really can humble you when you put it through an eye tracking setting and go, okay, I need to split the difference here because you can't even see it. I suppose you could use like eye tracking, not just for video ads, but any like static digital ad, it's probably like just as important, even more important to know, are people seeing what I want them to? One of the businesses in our backyard is 3M and they actually created uh, a product out of their eye tracking studies because they were in the business of creating stop signs, right? So they were bringing in people and putting on the wired hats and having them do these eyeball tests against their stop signs. And they're like, we should be able to create an algorithm for this. So they ended up replicating it with technology and then selling it to marketers. So they're just one of the examples of the many people out there selling it and they call it 3M Boss Visual Attention Service. And it's oftentimes marketed to point of purchase marketers as well. So people will take shots of their end caps or different aspects of the store and then see, are we attracting the right eyeballs in the right location, you know, even in the physical world. I did ask our Rob GPT to take a look at this one. Thank and, you. <laughs> you're welcome. It said, 
Imagine you're watching a fireworks show. The biggest, brightest fireworks might grab your attention first, but you're also drawn to the ones that explode right above you, creating unique patterns or disappear quickly. This study found that in video ads, while size and brightness matter, viewers are more captivated by moving relevant elements, similar to how you might focus on the most dynamic fireworks. Now, I don't know if I need to explain to ChatGPT that, yeah, if a firework exploded right above you, you'd probably notice that. <laughs> <laughs> That's like 4th of July, though. You got to watch out. There's the ones way up in the sky, and then there's oh, the yeah. ones there's, that are right <laughs> you. The ones your neighbors are shooting at you from their dock. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So maybe it is. They can say, like, yeah, I guess that's true. I might notice that a little bit more. <laughs> that's it for this episode of The Marketing Architects. We'd like to thank Ayanna Klapaki for producing the show and Taylor Delos Reyes for editing. You can connect with us on LinkedIn. And if you find the show valuable, please leave us a rating and review. And if you'd like to hear more from us, subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. It's built for marketers seeking research first analysis of the latest trends. You can go to marketingarchitects.com slash newsletter to subscribe. Now go forth and build great marketing. Awesome. I totally misinterpreted your questions. And if I talked on to it, I actually find that topic super interesting. So if that was too much detail, no. feel free to cut it out. I just... I thought that was great. Marketing Architects.